Hey folks, I'm Peter Melhorn. In this video, we're gonna talk about fishing with a bait that I believe is the easiest catfish bait to catch, and that's bluegill. Now, once water temperatures start to get into the mid 60s, that's when I start looking for bluegill along the bank to catch for catfish bait. Bluegill make excellent bait for flatheads, blue cats, channel cats, all catfish will feed on them. Springtime, early April uh, is when the time gets right and they start showing up. Pay attention to your weather, pay attention to your water temperatures. Uh, but once they're up there shallow, you can catch them in just a foot, two feet of water. And pretty much anybody can catch them anywhere in the country. Just about any body of water that will hold catfish will also hold bluegill. All right, guys, it's uh, early April. Water temperature's up to 67 in the back of this creek that I'm in. So uh, plenty of warm water for catching bluegill and brim, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna try to catch something for catfish bait, stock up my supplies. Got me a nice little tub of red worms there. Mmm, goodness. Oh, yeah. You can buy these things or you can... Ooh, that one's juicy. You can grow them in your yard, you can dig them up. Ah, just went and bought some. Oh, nice little piece on there. I think that's a number eight hook. Little octopus hook, I got it snailed on there. We're just gonna mess around right here on the edge and see if there's any fish in here. Ooh, I think he is swimming off. Yep, got him. Turned around to get a split shot and seen my little bobba moving. Little small one. These ain't good eating size, but they're good bait size. This one will go in the catfish bait stash. My worm back on there. Oh yeah, little bitty hook. Drop him in there. Put me a little bit of a split shot on here. Just to get this thing to cast a little bit better. There we go. I think that's enough weight now. Behind your chest. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Just that little sixteenth ounce little split shot makes a lot of difference. Getting that sucker out there. Boom, got him. Not aggressive. But he choked that one down too. There it go. It'd be nice to keep a couple of these alive, but the way they're going, they're choking on the bait. Got him. Got him. Another little one. There's a bunch of little bitty bluegill in here. But they're going to make perfect bait. Part of the process some days is getting your bait. I hadn't fished with them yet this year. Mainly because I've had just other stuff. But generally speaking, when you can catch them up on the bank like this, it means catfish are around there too. Flatheads especially. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he they're not hitting it hard hard. They're just coming up and bumping it. It's okay. That little sucker gonna lift that little monster. Well, after I got me about eight or 10 bluegill in the tank, uh, I headed out to do some drifting. Uh, I figured since water temperatures were up a little bit, I was gonna drag baits just to see what was going on with where the fish were. We're kind of into the crappy spawn here and uh, fish are pulling back off the bank, pulling out to a little deeper water, but I decided to work a little bit close to the bank. So I started dragging some baits, decided to use bluegill since I caught a good uh, little mess of them and it wasn't long and I had some rod spending. I think we got one taking a bait way back there. This one was 
<laughs> way back there. This is that Solace X reel. I've got a video up on this thing. Talking about it, it's a reel I've been trying out late in the winter and in the spring, really just uh, putting it through the paces. See how she performs. It's a big reel. Uh, it's probably oversized for most catfish fishing. It's uh, it's really big, but it's gonna get put to use down at the coast shark fishing this summer. So looking forward to that. Massive line capacity. Retrieve rate is very fast. I mean, it really puts line back on. And a massive amount of drag, 25 pounds. So, so it's over geared. Get out of that line, there we go. We're catching catfish, but giving it a shot and giving it a good field trial. Open up, girl. I'm trying to help you here. From the government. We're here to help you. Oh, words you don't want to hear. There we go. There we go. Good looking fish. About eight pounds. That one hit. A little chunk of bluegill. Back in the water alive. Dragging the bluegill, I uh, got varying size pieces out. I've got some fillets, I've got some heads, different chunks. Just got them on Santee rigs. It's a little homemade demon dragon type. Rolled it in some glitter. Make it look pretty. A little circle hook. Get them back in the water, rebaited, and catch another one. Just got a little cross section of bluegill right here. Put a hook through it, right through there. A little bit of an angle should help with some of the twist. Make sure there's no scale on it. That bait's ready to fish. Got something hitting my perch rod. Got a bait rod out to catch some bait while I'm dragging through here. Trying to upgrade on my bait a little bit. Poof, there he is. We will take that. Perch are kind of hard to come by right now, so. We're upgrading in many directions today. Now, obviously, check the laws wherever you're at to make sure it's legal. Most places, it's legal to use bluegill for bait, but there are some states where it's not. Also, in most states, you have to catch them on rod and reel to use them for bait. That is the way it is here. What that means is you can't keep them and use them if you catch them in a cast net. Did he pop off? No, he's there. <clears throat> he is there, I think. Poor little fish. Getting popped out here. I ran down the bank for a while. Pull this board off. And uh, save myself the trouble of dealing with it at the boat. And uh, the bank wasn't really producing any fish. I got that one blue. So I decided to, I don't know, I ran half mile down the bank, fairly close to it and uh, decided to pull out, make a run toward the river channel and just see if that makes a difference in the catch rate. Caught a bunch of crappie. I've got a double hook rig down with some minnows on it and uh, caught some crappie out here. Started to get some little bites. I think they're what this is right here, channel catfish. Uh, some of these had some bigger baits on them. Probably what's hitting on it. So, not what we're looking for. Now you can fish these baits live underneath the bobber, uh, suspending them for flatheads. Flatheads love bluegill, uh, but you can also use them as cut bait. That's the way I fish them most of the time. Uh, usually, what I end up doing is filleting both sides of them off, cutting the head off, and basically having those pieces. Depending on how big the bluegill is, if they're small, you're only going to get about three pieces of bait out of one. Uh, if they're bigger, sometimes you can get four or five, just depending on what you do with the fillets and how big a bait you want to fish. I think we got one on this planer hooked up. Yep. 
Yep, that would be a fish. Where's this sucker at now? Uh, where are we at? We're on the hump next to the river channel. Kind of shallow. Real bouncy, bouncy, bouncy up through here. A lot of stuff bouncing around. It's funny, two fish on planer board so far. Cow, uh, you're too big. Your head is too big to get my hands around. Good looking fish. Healthy fish, got a few old bite marks on there. They may be getting aggressive, who knows? Getting back alive. Now, one thing I will say is that warmouth. Uh, it's a type of sunfish. Uh, looks similar to a bluegill, but has a little different paint job on the outside. For whatever reason, catfish don't want to eat them. Uh, I've had, I've caught a few fish on them, but generally speaking, a warm mouth is not something that catfish like. I don't know if it's the taste or what it is with them, but uh, just a little word of warning there. If you get onto these things, and these things seem to stay in one small area, um, you know, they'll, they'll be around rocks usually. And uh, if you get onto a bunch of them, you're better off just packing up and moving on off. Fish. Is that a fish or a tree? Is that a fish or a tree? I ain't felt the head shake yet. That's the only thing. If it's a fish, it's a big fish. I'm waiting to... Right now, he's just, whatever it is, it's just coming at the boat. I believe this was one of the big bluegill heads. It's kind of twirling, which a limb will do that. The only thing is it's coming to the top of the water. It's a fish. It is a fish. It's playing like it's wrapped now. That fish don't look super huge. Which tells me with the way it's coming in, it's wrapped. We will see. Yep, coming in backwards. Not sure what happened here. in here before I drown him. Looks like a medium-sized fish. Might end this. Is, this is one that's going to be easy to break off at the boat. He is hooked in the tail. And that's a big fish. This hook will probably pull. I don't know. He's hooked good. Let's see if I can get him over here to where I can work him. Normally I always say get the head facing you, but his old head ain't gonna face me. That's a big fish. Not sure how to do this. I should net it. That would be the smart thing. Pow. I did it. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, and here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.